Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Obviously, the big story today was uh, the Fed. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us. Like, comment, share, whatever the hell you want to do. Uh, we want to be a part of your daily routine. And if you like unbiased, uh, unbiased market commentary, oh, well, this is the place for you. So let's talk about it. Uh, obviously, as you can imagine, uh, the first part of the day was very, very slow today. Okay, uh, the Fed was on deck. Uh, followed by Jerome Powell's uh, Q&A. Uh, the consensus was that we were going to hold uh, rates steady. Now, they came out with the news, uh, rates were steady, and on the surface, right, on the surface, it's not a bad thing because, again, what's basically telling us is that the fact that they didn't raise rates this time around basically meant, well, they were comfortable. Maybe inflation is starting to get under control. And then it started speaking. And that's the whole point why there's the initial headline. And then there is the Q&A. And Powell basically left it on the table that there is potential additional hikes down the road. Obviously, the market did not like that news. As you can see here by the reaction, after Powell stopped speaking, the market slid 1.5% uh, down. If you watched the video uh, last night, we talked about uh, the bottom of the range here, the 66.80 level, that was now the line of the sand for yesterday. Obviously, that broke down. And now we are you know, really, really aggressively below uh, the 50-day moving average that it couldn't reclaim back on even good news this morning. And then the market had, at one point, a nice little spike into those comments, uh, into that one, into that 371.70s level, but it caught shy of that 372 level we discussed last night, uh, which is the 50-day moving average. Confirmed yesterday's low with 366.80s and went all the way down here to this linear regression line into the 364 level. The key is for tomorrow, again, because you can see all this little airspace down below. The key for tomorrow uh, for the NASDAQ 100 is stay above 364. Okay, that's the key. If, if the NASDAQ 100, again, does, doesn't it won't mean it's a bullish thing. It just means that's a necessary area. You can see here by uh, this linear regression line here, every single time, it stopped at this channel here at bounce. So we were at this channel here again. The question is, can the bulls hold? So it's a very, very uh, open question. It's not really a, a yes or no. It's a rhetorical question. But if you look at today's setups, I'll, I'll give you, I'll share some setups uh, with you guys for tomorrow. You'll notice there's a lot of stocks that cracked. And if they didn't crack, they're about to crack. And if they didn't about to crack, they're about to take out the previous week's lows, which is no good. So it's a very, very important day uh, tomorrow for, for the Bears, again, like I said, even two, three, four videos uh, in the last couple of days, it's not that I'm sell bias. We're getting there. It's not that I'm sell bias. But again, as we said in the last three, four videos, how can you be bullish with the NASDAQ 100 continuously building underneath the 50-day moving average and stocks continuously sitting on the bottom of the range? Again, we'll get to some pivots uh, in a second. But it's very, very, uh, very, very interesting to kind of see um, – Kind of the big disconnect we've been seeing now all week. We've been talking about that uh, all week. Some tech stocks are strong, some tech stocks are weak. And then when you look at the final tally today, again, an ugly close, 1.5% uh, down uh, for the NASDAQ 100. You look at the SPX, we'll use SPY here uh, as a proxy. Same, you know, same levels. We talked about all these levels here in the last couple of days. Same levels here. The spies look like uh, kind of a moonshot here. Well, not a moonshot. I got kind of a swan dive portraits of words, kind of a swan dive here, potential magnet uh, all the way down to the 431 level. And when you look at uh, a lot of the setups here, there's some really aggressive, good looking setups uh, that I want to share with you guys uh, for tomorrow. Let me talk about the pivots first, and then we'll get to some pivots uh, for tomorrow. As you can imagine, uh, the beginning of the day, the market did nothing. The market did absolutely nothing. At one point, I believe the squawk box said, uh, the NASDAQ 100 volume was running 22% uh, lower today than it, and it did uh, you know, even though the last couple of weeks or the lower was 30 days, I believe. Um, so nothing was going on. And then slowly but surely, 
Meta woke up this morning. We'll get to Meta in a second. Uh, but the violence came towards the end of the day. Uh, as you will see here, it was, it was, you know, it was several uh, really aggressive moves to the downside. And again, that will segue into some pivots uh, that I really like for tomorrow. So uh, here was Tesla. So in the middle of the day, um, Tesla came out with some news where actually Elon Musk started talking about Starlink that really set the stock uh, going higher. What was odd about the move going higher on Tesla for that 271.50 break, right? You'll notice there's a, there was a lot of call buying coming in. If, you know, if, if 280s, 280 weeklies, 285 weeklies, 290s, 300s, 325s for October. So you started saying to yourself, wow, Tesla's going to really explode. And Tesla had a nice move, right? It took out this 271.50 level. It went to uh, 274. It was a nice move. There was nothing wrong with the move. And then the market completely fell out of bed. As you can imagine, it gave everything back, gave back the five-day moving average. And now we're looking at the bottom of the range, right? Which is so amazing. Uh, I was telling the webinar, any close today above 270, 271.50, I want to be long overnight. But now we are at the bottom of the range here, guys. This is how quickly things turn in a market, especially uh, on event days. And now we're facing this bottom range on Tesla for tomorrow. Again, remember, we're trading the ranges. We're not falling in love with the stock. We're falling in love with the ranges. And, you know, it looks so good. The rug got pulled on the bulls. And now I'm definitely, definitely watching uh, ranges here to the bottom. But if you did catch Tesla today, great job. Uh, 271.50s went all the way up to 274 before uh, Jay Powell decided to pull everything. Uh, WW, not a big move at all. Uh, 1220 needs to build. Went to like 1240. And then obviously everything pulled in. Uh, Roblox didn't confirm. I like Roblox for tomorrow. Look at the, guys, look at the setup for Roblox for tomorrow. Check out the setup. Look how close this is. If it can get below this bottom Bollinger Band, this thing can swan dive as well. Uh, Meta, uh, nice little pop here this morning. We talked about Meta last night on the video. Uh, 30620 needs to build. Here was Meta. You can see this 30620. I'll show you on the 60 minute chart. It took out this 30620. Nice move. Went up a couple of bucks. And then obviously everything got. Uh, rolled over uh, towards the end of the day. Uh, AMAT, I still like this, did not confirm. Guys, look at the setup on AMAT. Check out this, look how tight this thing is. Look at the setup on AMAT. If this thing starts losing the bottom channel tomorrow, boy, this thing could get hit. Uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA was definitely the big one uh, in the afternoon. Uh, 430 for bills below can flush. So NVIDIA got destroyed towards the end, right? It got absolutely destroyed. You can see it on the 60 minute view here. So here is the 430, 429 level finally kicked in here, guys. This thing is one day away from testing Monday's lows, right? You see that? If if NVIDIA starts confirming Monday's low, guys, we, we will go down all the way down to the August 14 lows potential, uh, which is 403. And then ultimately, uh, this thing could get really, really violent if the market continues to pull. But really, really big aggressive move uh, on NVIDIA into the close. And Carvana, remember we talked about Carvana on last night's video? Well, Carvana finally confirmed today. Uh, 46 needs to build. Uh, 46 held twice. If it builds below, can flush. And look at Carvana. Carvana got absolutely smoked here. Uh, it lost the 40. It lost the 46 area, which we talked about last night. Remember, we talked about uh, the 9.8 lows. And yesterday's lows stopped at exactly the same area. Today, it lost 46. Uh, went trading, well, pretty, pretty much traded, uh, closed at the lows of the day, 43 and change. This thing does look... Uh, lower as well. And uh, NVCR, I forgot to short it on the close. I forgot to short it on the close. Uh, NVCR, $18 earnings low. If it closes below, uh, can start its next leg down. I forgot to short it on the close, which sucks, but whatever. We'll watch it tomorrow. So uh, this close, this is the lowest close of the IPO, uh, of the earnings lows. It broke below 18 bucks. Not a big move yet, but I'm definitely watching it for tomorrow. A um, couple of swings that I've been holding for several days. Peloton uh, continues to kind of just drift. Uh, again, I still think uh, there's a shot at 442 next, uh, 442 next up, uh, potentially four. And Car Gurus, I shorted a couple of days ago. It's back to my entry. Uh, so it's literally back to my entry. Hopefully tomorrow, uh, hopefully tomorrow it loses, uh, it loses the low from several days ago and finally starts the swan dive. Uh, but let me give you guys a couple of uh, let me give you guys a couple of ideas for tomorrow that I really like. Uh, Nvidia, you know, definitely should be prime watch tomorrow. Okay, absolutely prime watch tomorrow. If it loses Monday's low, uh, that again, there's a shot. This thing only goes all the way down to the August lows. Could be really, really good. Uh, Tesla, we just talked about as well. Uh, guys, look at AMD. 
AMD is very, very close to the bottom of the range here. I definitely want to keep an eye on this thing as well. Uh, look at Google. Big, big reversal today. Google took down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine days, 10 days worth of buying. That's not good. First close below the 50, uh, the 20 day moving average. Uh, this thing starts confirming today's channels. Uh, this thing could get hit as well. And Tesla, again, like I said this a little early ago, Tesla, I am definitely watching now on the bottom of the range here because it stopped there twice in the last two weeks. So again, guys, remember, it's not the stock that we're watching. It's not the stock that we care about. It's the range is both long and short that's ready to confirm. So very aggressive sell-off here uh, towards the end of the day. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 continues to build uh, below the 50-day moving average. Now it's day five. Uh, now every level we talked about so far has confirmed. And now we're looking, if we can start confirming today's channel, then we're looking at 62, 60, and then 58, which would be the last straw uh, for the bulls that potentially could break the camel's back. So that's it, guys. We are set up for tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping we get a gap up open. The only reason why is because I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have a chance to trade uh, all these stocks at the pivots that we're watching for tomorrow. The last thing I want to see tomorrow is NVIDIA gap down 10. I don't have any. So uh, I'd love to see uh, a little bit of a gap up open tomorrow. Uh, the bulls to get potentially uh, squashed uh, into supply, start taking down today's channels, and hopefully we can get a big measure potential session for tomorrow. Just a reminder, guys, tomorrow uh, is Thursday. Thursday is my normal uh, evening off. So if you are joining us tomorrow in the live webinar, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Look forward to working with you. Other than that, guys, the video continues, uh, starts up again uh, over the weekend. Have an awesome, awesome Thursday. Have an awesome, awesome Friday. And with God's help, I'll see you all there. Take care.